What's up, YouTube? I've got a freaking epic episode today. Dude, it's a home service gold rush. Banks are all in on roofing, and I got some guys that come from an unorthodox spot. They've seen some really tough times, but recently were able to scale and exit their business for mega millions. These guys have become the number one dominant insurance restoration player in one of the biggest markets in America, Atlanta, Georgia, and they did it all through hardcore door to door, winning battles with insurance adjusters. Maybe you saw my dude Raymond go viral on the internet. We're gonna talk a little bit more about this, but we're gonna talk about their journey to scale and exit, what they're doing now, and building a big platform, buying roofing companies. If you're watching this right now, doesn't matter if you're new to the business, you gotta learn this skill. The skill that pays the bills is being able to knock on doors and sell roofs, and then you gotta be able to scale it. Because it looks like I got two guys here, Todd Price, Raymond Little, welcome to the Blue Collar Boardroom. Thanks, up, brother. So y'all are business partners, and um, y'all have two different skill sets, right? What makes a good partnership, and what are y'all's skill sets? I think the, the biggest thing when it comes to a partnership is being able to balance each other and, mm -hmm. you know, have, well, one, we both have completely different skill sets, but two, we have different train of thoughts to where we were able to have open conversations on and point out different variables when a topic or a problem arises on, hey, here's my thought on it, and he has a different opinion, and we're able to say, oh, shit, you know, I didn't think about that. And we bring it to light and then we can sit down and have a, a reasonable conversation and come to the best agreement. So, Hell yeah, Raymond. What are your strengths? What are his strengths? I think my strength is mainly um, grouping the team together in the field, delegating it um, in the neighborhoods. I like to build standard operating procedures for sales, uh, the door knocking team, uh, which they call BDT, business development team. Uh, also the call center, the telemarketing leads. And I build a system then I pitch it to Todd, because he's my business partner, and then he's able to help on the inside. It takes two people. Somebody's gotta be on the outside, somebody's gonna be on the inside, and he's, he helps me shape and put his spin on it too. So it's, He pokes holes in it. Yeah, so we can sustain it in multiple states. So right. That's, that's the biggest thing, uh, I think, why we've been so successful in team building uh, in the field, in the office, building the culture, is uh, we put both up. Now, on the outside, it looks like both of us have big, big egos, but when we sit down, we're able to put those to the side and build the best operating team for our team. 40 million, Atlanta, Georgia, but you came from humble beginnings. So uh, where where did you come from before roofing? <laughs> um, go, yeah. for, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, basically the streets. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, just hustling in the streets day to day, you know, from 16 to 33 years old, in and out of prison, in and out of addiction. It's the story right there of yeah. the comeback king. Yeah, yeah. Just had to put it together. Yeah, man. Coming out of prison. Yeah. How'd you get into roofing? They were, uh, we were a true tech. Justin Simpson, uh, his partner, um, was a good friend of mine, 20 something years. I was sweeping the floors, cleaning the bathrooms um, of a, of a um, truck uh, accessory cars, place. Yeah, car. Yeah, uh, like where you come and get all your, your, you know, lifts, your stuff done. Yeah, mm -hmm. lifts, wheels, tires, everything. And I, I've seen them come in like more than once, more than, more than once. Had and big old truck, big old yeah. fucker and left I, the I, truck. I seen Justin, I was like, man, dude. What the fuck are y'all doing? Yeah, because like, he, he's a street dude too, and we ran the streets together. Yeah. And uh, and I actually stopped Todd. I was in a 2001 uh, BMW station wagon, and he was in his lifted dually coming. I said, God damn, dude, I might have to figure it out. I mean, I got to come over there or something, because I'm over here cleaning toilet bowls. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's so, basically how it worked. How do you spot a talent like Raymond when he's cleaning toilets? What makes him so successful from co from toilet cleaner to fucking 10,000 roofs? So for me, you know, the biggest thing that I've always said when, when looking for somebody to hire or train or whatever is, I don't give a fuck what your talents are, or what your knowledge base is, I can teach you that. But your work ethic and somebody that's as humble as that and willing to do whatever it takes, because I think he was washing boats before that, which I didn't yeah. know that at the time. But somebody that's out in the hot ass fucking sun washing boats and then now you're over here doing whatever it takes and putting racks in vans and you're constantly moving. Every time I see you in there, you're doing something different. Just trying to get back on your feet and provide for yourself and provide for your son. You've got a work ethic. And if you're lazy, I can't, I can't fix that. You know what I mean? But if you got a work ethic and you fucking are willing to grind, I can teach you how to sell. I can teach you what storm damage looks like. Or even if we talk about any other industry, I can teach you that. But I can't teach you hard work. 
So, you know, he had the hard work. I like to fuck with him a little bit because we had to work on his climbing skills right off the bat. We'd, he wouldn't get on anything over a four. But Damn, now. no, you were scared of heights. <laughs> yeah, yeah how to overcome the heights. Yeah. You, Motherfucker man. Atlanta's got some steep-ass roofs, boys. Oh, damn, bro. Now he'll climb anything. So okay. Me and him have yeah. climbed some of the craziest shit together that's out there in Atlanta and had fun doing it. So, but it's been a journey. Well, walk me through, like, the first year, first two years, like, I was a canvasser. Mm-hmm. You were a canvasser? I was a canvasser. I got a, what, I got $100. So when I first, yeah, when I first brought him on, we were at True Tech. Yeah. And he was a canvasser, and he did uh, 27 lead, twenty-seven deals. He got $100. Because a lot of canvassers coming on, you know, they don't have... They're they pretty much, have, like, coming off of, like, uh, rehab or yeah, coming out of, like, know, a halfway like a house. Or, industry, yeah. You know? I was homeless when I was... You were homeless yeah. when you started? And I was homeless when I started the company. So mm-hmm. now when Ray comes in, I'm a little bit further along, obviously. But a lot of people coming in, they couldn't wait a month or two to sign a job, get it approved, get it built, wait for it to be capped out, and then get, to get paid on it. So what we would do is do $100 for a sign-up. So whatever you signed up that, that week, if you signed up five, you got $500 that Friday. And then $200 for approval, and same thing. Whatever you got approved that week, you get paid on Friday. Um, so he was killing it just off sign-ups and approvals. And then... Um, Eventually, I bought yeah, he bought his, bought his first truck. Uh, Damn, yeah. off a of $300 commission, yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> off a of fucking, uh, uh, what, what year was it? 2009? 2009, Tacoma. Yeah, a little Tacoma. First truck. And uh, I got him an iPad. And fucking, we did it, started doing everything digital. And we took off since then. It was me and him and Shannon, who's one of our top guys still. And uh, we went just balls to the wall grinding every fucking day. And, you know, when we first started, me and him were on the truck together all the time and I outgrew all my sales reps that I was working with what yeah. year was that uh, um 15 yeah 15 ish but we didn't have any office at that time we didn't mm-hmm. have nothing so I would be driving he'd be do- telling me directions I'd be writing which I know, hopefully no cops are listening to this. I'd be fucking writing down orders and screenshotting them send them over to ABC or Beacon or whoever sending them off the roofers going to appointments, going to South Carolina, coming back to Georgia, all in one day, from like 5 a.m. to 8, 9 p.m. every fucking day. And um, and then when I got home, I'd have to do all our COCs and everything else, like as far as back office type stuff. And then finally, we, we just kept growing, got, started just hiring office staff. And, you know, now I think we got like 12, 13 people in the office. So people that are like, I don't have an office. How am I going to grow? Yeah. You fucking you make you it goddamn happen. do it all. You goddamn but, do it all, you dog. <laughs> We have yeah. all, you know, we, what was cool. Neither was one of us had money to, yeah. to do that. So fucking just hire somebody to do it. So we had to do it. And yeah. We were capable of it. And we put in the work and, you know, but now we know how. What was your first, like, fuck up? Like, your first, like, when you're scaling and you, you, you feel like you fucked up? Probably building too many too fast. Okay, so getting ahead of the money, like, not collecting money up front or not doing the depreciation? Too, too fast, I think. Uh, I, would say for, I would say for me, which was before Ray was when I was with True Tech, we explained, expanded too fast. Mm-hmm. You know, I was young, we were fresh into being entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. and we were in seven states, which just sounded fucking cool to say, mm-hmm. we're in seven fucking states, but we had one or two people in seven fucking states, so it didn't right. do shit for us. And then it was hard to manage because you're all over the place. And you got people to go in road or doing different shit. And so when we kind of scaled back and brought them all back to a more centralized hub, see our numbers went through fucking things. So I would tell anybody, like, don't grow too fast. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the biggest thing that I've seen a lot of people try to do. Mm -hmm. Focus on one thing, get it down, whether it's one location. By growing too fast, it's opening multiple locations and adding overhead. and Or adding too many services. Like, get one thing down first Mm -hmm. or one state down, location, whatever. Mm -hmm. Once you get all the processes, procedures, and you have that so honed in that you can't make any mistakes, Mm -hmm. then you're able to open up. Where, where do you move too fast in sales sometimes? Like, because sales is your deal, and sometimes you get you get ahead of yourself. I think, uh, you know, moving too fast in sales is bringing guys on and giving them the world off the rip. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, percentages, oh, yeah. Boy, giving a 50% guy? Yeah, off the rip. Uh-huh. I, I think the industry's moving more to a 15, 50, 50. Um, you don't come in and work directly with the, 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 the top guys. Um, 50 50 causes a lot of arguments. They get title too, brother. Yeah. I mean, for me, what's required is they got to sell it, build it, and collect it. And if they don't manage the job and collect their money, then in the contract, I can hold two thirds of their commission. These are the people that go and complain. Yeah. You, y'all got any people they like that? 
Yeah. We've had, we've went through, we've, we've probably had 300 sales reps just like everybody else. Um, you know, we've, we've built probably more million dollar producers in the state of Georgia than anybody else. Uh -huh. We probably still have and retain more companies. Did any of those start their own company? Oh yeah. 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 They're still, they're still out there to the day. And the, the, what the good thing is, you know, we paid every one of them and then we can, I can still text and kid with those guys. Uh, for the most part, I think every one of them. Just given, you know, a uh, uh, somebody walking in the door, 10, 50, 50, and, and assume that they they deserve that. Uh, I think with a Chick-fil-A or a Subway or something, you gotta buy in a million dollars, and uh, our uh, Subway's probably 500,000 nowadays, mm -hmm. and you're gonna make 100 grand that year. Yeah. But we were giving people opportunity, you come in here and do your subcontractor agreement, you're gonna make 300 grand this year for free. Right. So I think uh, the industry's turning more into like, a, you come in the door, you're going to go up under a sales manager here and uh, you're not getting my phone number. You're not going to get Todd's. Uh, we got we got top performing people here and they're up under those people and they're up under those people. People can call it a pyramid, but I call it a, the, those people put in their time. No, that's a structure. Yeah. And that's talk, a structure. Talk, yeah. talk, the biggest thing too is like you get you, a lot of those people that want those, you know, set pay scales, 50-50 or different things like that and entitled and feel like me coming to you for an interview is like a privilege for you. Like, mm -hmm. well, that's great. You might be phenomenal with sales, but hey, look, we have different processes and procedures from where you came from. So you're still going to go through training and learn our way. Mm -hmm. And you might get expedited through training, but still we do things differently and that's why we're the best for a reason. So mm -hmm. be humble enough to accept that mm -hmm. and then you can grow and scale, you know, faster. But a lot of people, like I said, they get entitled. A lot of people, you know, think the grass is greener on the other side. They go try different things and then they come back because they realize it wasn't. Some come back, depends on how they left. Some. Well, what, how how do you back. think the beginning of a salesman start to fall apart? Like they're going really good and then something happens. Like, well, you see this a lot, don't you? So, so yeah, so I think the biggest thing is now is they don't realize what working capital is, right? That, you know, to build as many roofs as that we do, I think around to build 50, 60 roofs a week, uh, how much it really cost. Even if you're going, up, that's what we build, 50 to 60 a week. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, they realize that we've made it so easy that it is easy. Yeah. And yeah. they don't realize how hard it really well, is. Well, working capital could be like, we used to require half down, but we started doing one third, but then they don't pick up the second third in time. And then the job's finished and we got a complaint with a customer. Mm -hmm. And now the customer's holding the money till the complaint's fixed. Yeah, so yeah. window screen's ripped. Yeah, well, have you ever had a, fuck, you had a fucking <laughs> salesman ever tell you, I can't get that check because the gutters aren't done? Yeah. yeah, let's just close it out. Let's just close it. Let's uh, just... Dude, I've had salesmen tell me that, you know, over $500, I mean, that's an hour drive, like just, let's just wave that 500. Okay. It's gonna come out of your commission. Or drive your fucking ass over there and fucking, you're quick to wave my money. Yeah. But if I fucking take it out of your money, then you have an issue. Isn't that funny how that works? It's weird. What are some of the things that you do to stay up in front of the money? Like one of the things that I got, you know, there's this all this shit about Lee Hate being a scam and I'm not gonna hide from one thing. Going from 65 million to 150 million is gonna mean that you max out your credit lines. It's gonna mean that you have to basically, we, we'll build, there's some of the days that we build 20 in a day. Mm -hmm. And that's not the normal pace. Normal pace is more like 50 or 60 a week. Yeah. But when I get into that pace, dude, the amount of, you know, like how fast I got to be on the back end, how fast I got to collect depreciations. And, you know, we've kind of shifted to where we may, we don't finance depreciation over 30 days under any circumstance. We require 50% down. We don't jo build a job without a supplement. We don't start a job without a first check. But what things have y'all done to like stay in front of the money so that you can build 50 or 60 a week? Very, very <laughs> similar. You know, we have, so for any job can get approved to be ready to be built it has to have we have to have a deposit mm -hmm. uh, which is normally the acv check dealing with insurance deductible we're fine if we collect it up front or on the back end but we got to get the acv and then uh same thing we want to supplement in there contract scope shingle color everything's got to be signed now we all on. build it if there's a supplement pending and it's profitable yes yes if it's already if it's already profitable that's how i did my whole life but in florida because they they will hold up the supplement so long the, that'll take me six months sometimes to get yeah. my depreciation. Well, and that's why we 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 try to schedule everything two to three weeks out. Uh -huh. Now, obviously, it could rain for five days during those next two to three weeks, right. which push those bills back. But at least we have a supplement in there. Right. So when it's time to send in the CFC, we've already got it all right there. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's anything major, like... Redeck or something. Uh, yeah, we come across slat decking or something. You don't... I'm calling the adjuster or the project manager's calling the adjuster. Hey, you forgot this was slat decking. I know we went over it at the adjuster meeting. Everything else looks great, but can you just add that slat or add that redeck in there and resend me the I want that on paper 
before we do it because we've had times where they say, oh yeah, forgot it. Just go ahead and do it and supplement me on the back end. And then the adjuster gets fired because we're working for another <laughs> insurance company and there's not documented anywhere. And then we're out five, six, seven grand that it costs to redeck the house. Now as a business owner, uh, you got to invest in leads, salespeople, everything. Um, we got to build the jobs. Um, what what happens when cash flow gets tight? Like what what, what do you do? Well, we've kind of evened out now. But yeah, we've took we didn't get paid for about three months one time. I forget what year that was. There's been time, yeah, we yeah. went for a long time without taking money. <laughs> yeah. There's been times that we you know have. I think have in seventeen, money back in. seventeen or eighteen. I think in eighteen after July we had had a big hell storm and I think we built a lot and I think we, we me Lance and Todd we didn't get paid for a couple months. Uh-huh. And a lot of it was the same thing you were talking about having to build so many so many roofs. Yeah. Because you have sales guys that get so focused on the next sale that one, they lose referrals, but two, they forget about the back ends, which is how they get paid. Um, but we have all these sales camp coming in, and I forget what year it was. I think it might have been 18. I think it was after that storm. And 18. it rained like the first three, that four months of the year. That it was, was 20. It, yeah, it was raining like crazy. So we were backed up like we were four or five months out on builds four or five months yeah people want to leave and so you got salespeople going crazy imagine if dimitri would have interviewed those people then Uh, (laughs) (laughs) so you got people bitching and we have to you know we have to accommodate them and figure out how we can make them happy because we can't let the weather dictate their pay as well you know so and we're the owners of the company so essentially it falls on us we have to figure it out and so we would take money out of our pockets and invest it or go without pay depending upon the situation yeah um but we would do the same thing be- well i did the same fucking thing this year guys when the hurricane happened i had to put a ton of stuff into large loss i put about four million on the streets and it got to a point dude i don't know if y'all ever got these phone calls before doing a hurricane is kind of scary because you put out all this money but it'd be like tuesday it'd be like dude lee if you don't collect six hundred thousand, you won't make payroll <laughs> i mean straight up sometimes people don't understand what it takes to to double from a big company and of course dude here's the thing if you follow the rules, like, you know, God takes care of the people that are out there doing the good things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, money always duplicates itself and has always been one of those deals. But this year, me, my mom, we had to we had to pull our, our money, $2 million, and put it back into the company. You know, in the third quarter of this year, finally, $8 million in commercial. Fucking boom, just a big wave of all the money that we invested. But waiting four months when other companies are offering your people more money. They're offering the people to leave they're creating this almost narrative just trying to prey on your downfall did any of that happen yeah we get people to to see our numbers you know because i'm real big and ray is too on as guys you know hit certain thresholds you know we want to reward them and so we we put that out there for people to see because one we want them to get and same thing if they hit a certain number we'll show like another person just hit two million and we're six months into the year you know all these fucking shingles in georgia so we want to give them public praise or we buy them gifts and give them yeah. public praise. And there's the other side of that. There's another side to that. Because <laughs> What's the other side of that? Yeah. So <laughs> growing pains. Yeah, but what they start so getting like the jackals, yeah. the fucking yeah. jackals come out. So yeah. what you have it? to give them that praise so people understand. And so it's, it's a, it's a catch 22 because you give them the praise. You have other, other sales reps that see that and are like, Oh shit, I should go to perimeter. They're doing something right. But then you also have other owners that then see, oh shit, Perimeter's got this motherfucker trained up. I need to get him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So and both of the people that Dimitri interviewed, I did podcasts with. As soon as I did the podcast, of course, they're hit up by all the other companies. And it does go to their head. Yeah. Well, and we have a quick, me and Ray have no problem having a quick conversation with anybody that wants to steal some. We're not, yeah. we're not scared of that. So no. Confrontation whatsoever. No. But, uh, but there's a difference between somebody who, like, for instance, both these guys were in the middle of finishing out their book of business and they went to open their own company or take jobs other places and we caught them. Mm-hmm. And there's a difference when someone's transparent with you Correct. and they talked. What we were talking about before, can you kind of explain? Yeah, 100%. So, and I think that is more difficult than another owner trying to poke because a lot of times, especially if you take care of your guys, they're not going to leave. They're not going to leave. No. You know, um, no matter what owner it is, but, or what company, but, if you're especially when you get to a time where you're three four months out on mm-hmm. builds mm-hmm. and you have some of your top guys that are turning in 
five to ten roofs a week and they, mm -hmm. they're now they're like i got 30 roofs in the pipeline like and i haven't been paid in two weeks because nothing's getting built because of the rain like they don't think about the rain they think about why aren't my roofs getting built mm -hmm. and we're four months out i'm gonna lose jobs i got people pissed off i can go do this on my own and just build nothing but my roofs so i think that's so you lost some salesmen that year some people started their own company oh 100 percent. and then some you know same thing some people that tried to go behind our back and you know convert jobs over onto their their own contract and mm -hmm. because you know everybody now you just go ahead and keep paying them or do you hold the money until the jobs are finished because hold the money until the jobs are finished every job every job see them i in the contract i have the right it says if you go out and you're done with the company then i have the right because there's jobs that could have problems there's chargebacks there's all kinds of things that Correct. can happen right yeah. We could find out we, that we the people stole them, from us, yeah. that they actually had the customer write them a check to their personal. You ever, that. you ever had that happen a oh, few we times? Had that happened in North Georgia, and it was horrible. No, it was, no, it was, uh, it was Chattanooga. North, Chattanooga. It was in Chattanooga. We had that. I'm still looking for you. <laughs> yeah, he has warrants <laughs> and everything. But we so so we went up there. We let them pick out shingle colors. We built all the roofs out of our pocket. So and they have, wrote them home. They wrote him personal checks or gave them cash. And it says on our contract, do not pay a representative. Do not. But they did anyway. Yeah. But and and how he did it to so many people, I don't know. I, this was a random was Saturday or Sunday, yeah. Yeah. and I had gotten a phone call from the news from the new, a news channel. Fucking and, sucks. Yeah, and they were like, "We'd like to interview about this person and the amount of money." That <laughs> God they damn it! And I'm like, I ain't the only like, one. I have no idea about this. So um, I said, "Can I please have the the person that you're talking to their information?" I said, "I'd like to to make right because that's not how we operate." Thankfully, they gave me the person's information. Yeah. Um, I said, look, here's here's the options I'm going to do. I'll either do your roof for what you've already paid him. I haven't made any money. I'll do your roof for free or whatever you paid him. You show me the receipt and the contract that you, you did, and I'll give you that money back if you don't trust us. I completely understand either way. So I think there was eight or nine of them. And we did like all but one. One of them we paid back twenty something thousand dollars. All the others we roofed. And we had some of them that were very understanding. There was one dude. Oh yeah. God, what did he call himself? Um, yeah, he's like a missionary or he something. He was a crazy. he was an old school military dude. Yeah, he was hunting them too. Yeah. Um, he was hunting yeah. Them. We did. I went up there to hang out with him yeah. and collect one of his uh, his back end payment because he did receive the back end from the insurance. And uh, he said, "I'm looking for him." <laughs> yeah. Said, he said, I got some of these girls I talked to down here on the corner. He said, they're looking for me. Yeah. Damn. So, okay. yeah. so hey, we've, I we've tell pretty you, much been through all. I'll tell you what, we got some insurance adjusters probably that know us. They're <laughs> looking for me. They, they, someone said, my dad is an executive insurance, and today they showed this in the ethics class, and it was my roofer versus adjuster video where I was on a $10 million loss. But I'm sure they're studying your video. You went viral, over 4 million views. What happened that day? Basically, I thought, is this getting out? Of, so uh, somebody else had already, another company had already adjusted the roof, um, couldn't get it approved. Um, I went and did an attempt to repair, um, sent the video in. They granted us a uh, another adjustment where uh, we were meeting them on the roofs and they're gonna personally watch me do the repair. The customer had been with them for 51 years. Customer for 51 years. State Farm had, uh, had uh, assured the roof um, since it was new construction, since it's brand new. 33 missing shingles, 100 wind crease, last roof on the whole street, legitly, I know every roofer says that, legitly, last roof on the whole street. Um, <clears throat> and we went up there and uh, <laughs> the adjuster walked ahead of me and he went to lift up a shingle by a missing shingle to check and just lift up to see if there's like debris up on it or something and broke the corner off. I said, well, we're done here. <laughs> he's, like, he's, like, he's like, what? I said, dude, you just broke the corner off that shingle. He goes, no, 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 that don't count. I said, bro, there ain't no do-overs in a brutal test. <laughs> there ain't no do-overs. There's no do-overs. And I said, Shannon, start filming. <laughs> start filming. Yeah, and then he so what just, proceeded? Yeah, he was just a pain freak after that. So, uh, but he wouldn't, uh, <clears throat> I mean, I kept showing him. He's like, no, you got to finesse it. You got to, you got to take care you're of it. You're being too aggressive. Gotta, you're being oh, too aggressive. Oh, you got aggressive yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah. I was like, dude. dude what do you want me to do with it? I was like, dude. dude it was just, the most gentle repair yeah, I've yeah. ever seen. Yeah. And I was like, dude, just show me. And he's like, no, I, I don't know how to show you. Like, what? He's he said, like, I'm not a roof expert. I'm not a roof expert. <laughs> God damn. I yeah. said, bro, you're making like coverage out here. You got you video be, out here. Yeah, you have to sometimes. Like, Yo, he video. Just, he just stayed in it, stayed you in You got it. that motherfucker, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the regular people in America fucking yeah. loved you getting that yeah, motherfucker, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. It, it, was, it was pretty cool. And what was so cool is that we had 11 roofs to do that day to either inspect or adjust. 
So on the way to the video was so long when I uploaded it, I just, it was taking so long. So I just threw my phone down because I jumped out to an all state claim and to do the adjuster meeting. Dude, when I came off that roof, because it was, it was steep, it was 12 12, you know, we had all the climbing equipment for the adjuster and pulling him up. Dude, when I got off that roof, that thing had like, already had like 8,000 views. God! From uploading. I was like, oh shit. Would you up what platform? It's just the Facebook. Yeah, Facebook first. Oh, wow. Facebook yeah, first. Yeah, I should have did. But YouTube, you YouTube. YouTube dude, dude, the other guy swagger jacked <laughs> your fucking views, yeah, he's got dog. got like 10 million views or Motherfucker. something. Motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just like, whatever. You know, it is whatever. Cause, you know. Yeah. But the homeowner, the, I think the best thing that Ray did was the homeowner, one of the homeowners was standing on the ground the whole time and yelling up at the guy, too. And Ray even said to the guy, after doing three or four different shingles, Ray said, look, I don't know what it is you have against me. We won't even be on the COC. Just to prove that y'all do what's right for the homeowner, and we'll have somebody else roof it. Like, I don't even care, but yeah, do right by the fucking homeowner. 30 squares. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was just like, dude, just give him. I felt bad at that point, man. I was like, dude, listen, if I made you mad by, like, you know, by showing, you know, by embarrassing you, screw it. Buy the roof. I'll have somebody else build it. He can pick whoever, and my name won't be on the COC. Perimeter roofing won't be on the COC. You're good, dude. You know, and you uh, won. Yeah. You, yeah, you want, bro. You want, like, it is what it is. You know, whatever. So, of course, none of that has to do with making a multi million dollar exit. All right. All these guys watching this, if you can build an eight figure roofing company or home service company, you can make an eight figure exit. These guys did. But what are the things that they look for? Uh, you went through the process. You know, there are things that check the box, things that didn't. What did you have? What did you have to fix, tweak? What did you have that they liked? A lot. So, and it's different from company to company as far as what they're looking for. Some are looking for retail. Some are looking for, you know, insurance models. Some are looking for um, uh, 1099 models. Some are looking for W-2 models. So it kind of varies. The biggest thing that's kind of transcends across all, all companies is they're looking at risks. Every single thing that they look at and how you answer that question, they're looking at, is that a risk in the future? Is that a risk in the future? So the less risks that you have, the better it is, is for you. But other than that, uh, they do, you know, quality of earnings and they, they look at your EBITDA. So first is your accounting and y'all, I'm sure we're in the past probably on cash accounting. When did you switch to accrual? At the transition. So you weren't completely accrual before the, no. and do you think just having clean books for cash purposes, how did it translate in the, in the cell? Like, how did it work? Did so, they want you to go accrual before the exit? We didn't know no. we were, we didn't, we weren't, we weren't setting up the exit. Okay. Yeah, they, 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 they brought a third party in to help transfer everything over uh -huh. until we brought in a CFO. I got you. So, and the third party still assists. Well, the, at about 40 million, I had to bring in a CFO myself. Yeah. I, I had this accounting team, I had controllers, I had people that were smart, but I just didn't have, my CFO now has been a part of a, mo a bunch of exits. She, you know, and in reality, I didn't make the switch to a curl until after 40 million. Yeah, you know? and that's right when we did it. And so we brought in the CFO, we brought in the controller. Um, now we're looking for a COO to help with integration and things of that nature. Um, and also to give me more time to get out and recruit other companies, to do public speaking, to do podcasts. So you're buying that. roofing companies. Yes. You make a big exit mm -hmm. and you're going to roll that money. Life-changing fucking money. Congratulations, guys. What are you going to do with it? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to raise my no, bike. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to raise my I'm, bikes. I'm happy. I'm building my, uh, my parents a house and uh, I told them to retire. And other than that, I'm good. And, 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 I, I'm, yeah, sorry. and I think the biggest thing is too, me and Todd and Lance got to get out of the way and all the other, Paul, Nolan, he's got to get out of the way. We got to get out of the way because we owe it to our team to let them, you know, get in line, mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to carry it to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's, that's a, and get out of the way, not in the sense of we're still there day in day, yeah, day out. Yeah. Like we're doing everything, but we've gotten to where we've put more on other people to hold more people That's how they learn, bro. Yeah. They can't learn without making the mistakes because and having a responsibility. You know, if you're taking it all role, from them, they can't fucking get better. That's it. And when there's another role, somebody's going to have to step up. Mm -hmm. And if there's nobody to step up, that makes it hard for everybody. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we want to have people in place that can that can fill Ray's shoes and fill my shoes. And I think that shoes. that door to door, you being the door to door sales strength, you being the operation strength is the sweet science of the company, right? Um, what else is there that's special for perimeter that y'all do you better know, we than we got Lance, who's very logistical. Okay, nice. So Lance does all the builds, schedules what crew needs to go where based off 
Is it shingles? Is it tile? Do we have some sort of specialty roof going on? The pitch, the size, all those mm -hmm. things. Gets the dump, tra uh, dump trailers delivered where they need to go. Does all the organization with the crews. So he works on all the logistics with um, Bobby, who's in our back office, who orders all the materials. So they work hand in hand day. So there's three of us. Yeah, it's three of us are running something that's big. I mean, there, I mean, there's a bunch of us. There's a bunch, the office staff. I mean, that, our office staff's so good that you know people try to poach our office staff to go run their company. So, uh, I mean, you know, Primer has been a unique, unique vehicle. Ironically, both of these fuckers talking shit poached people, took them with them. I mean, good for them. Mm -hmm. But um, these same people that have built their whole company off of my employees and people are the ones that say that I didn't help them. Isn't that crazy? It's normal, isn't it? I, mean, I hear it all the time. It's, it's normal. At the end of the day, though, people know the truth. And yeah, they do. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah it is. As long as you don't talk about my wife and kids, we're great. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, here, here's the thing about it. So look, you know, and I, I stay super neutral on all the beef in the in the market because they don't pay me enough to even uh, Fuck entertain with it. it. Yeah, yeah. If you're paying me seven figures, I'll, I'll entertain it. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. But if you're not paying me uh, seven figures, I'll, I'll like it, laughy face it, hard it, whatever. You know, I love I love you and Demetri to death. I, I love the industry. It is what it is. But here's the thing about it. There's a lot of people out in this industry that are coaches, training, this and that. What I tell people, man, is follow the people that are putting a bunch of roofs on and making a bunch of money. That's that's the only way you're going to learn. There's not going to be a coach that's going to come in and take you from a $3 million company to a $20 million company unless they are currently in their own skin putting a bunch of roofs on and actively in the industry. And that's just my opinion. You know? And when you put a bunch of roofs on, it causes roofing problems. Yeah. Like, you know, roofing business is about how many problems you solve. I wish there was and this universal world where every job went perfect, every salesperson was perfect. I got my money on the, on every job every time, but that just doesn't seem how it works. Well, it's so different too because going back to the process with us exiting the company. So there's so many variables that as we were doing a quality of earnings and trying to look at profitability from month to month and well, why was why was your income more on this month but your expenses were less or why were your expenses so much on this month but your income was less and it's not producing this cup and it cost me five cents but i'm selling it for a dollar like there's no every roof is different every roof. every insurance pays different every pitch every shingle you know crews might be different that's what makes the roof business hard and yeah and then you have different variables on top of that as every fucking as salesperson's different correct. every goddamn million dollar producer is different and then i could have a, i could have a job that pays that's retail or that's insurance that they already have check in hand i sign it today mm -hmm. build it this week back end comes in next week or i could have one that i collected front end on three months ago yeah wife can't make a decision on shingle color or they're at their second home in paris for the next three months right. and what, it takes eight months to close out what percentage of insurance restoration guys get to their credit limit and then have to pay it down I especially see, in the I store see a lot of people, yeah i see a lot of people get in trouble mainly uh, I, see, I see it more in georgia just because we're because we're there primarily obviously but i've seen a, a lot a lot of people and it takes a lot of discipline to be able to, to use your credit line and get it to certain amounts and pay it down but i've seen a lot of people that know that i have this much and it's like having a credit giving your wife a credit card or your yeah. daughter a credit card and they run that some bitch up or you take money from roofs and you go spend it on nascar or you go spend it on crazy shit that you're not getting Make returned sure. or you, you go fucking buying all kinds of shit outside of the company you know i had this dude on this interview talking about well at ABC Supply, they wouldn't sell us any shingles. They said they had a $5 million credit and they were a million dollars over. Well, let me tell you something. If a $13 billion company gives me $5 million in credit, what's that fucking say? Yeah. It says that fucking we were humping and, you know, yeah, we had to write them a check. We had to write them a million dollar check at one time. I had to pay them fucking 300000 a week to get caught back up. But the thing was is that when insurance companies started going out of business here, dude, they just fucking took all the insurance guys in Florida and they just said, nah, dude, no more net 60 and you know that means that we get an extra 30 days on 60 days it's a big deal yeah and i'm gonna I'm say this because i did work in florida and it's not our wheelhouse and uh we pulled out of florida um, why <laughs> listen uh, for 25 different reasons but i'm saying so if you're it ain't easy is it no so if you're roofing, what makes it harder than a regular dude, market it ain't even this not even this ain't the same sport it's not even the same sport no so my hat's off to anybody that roofs in florida so I came down here every other week for a while um, last year. Um, sat with you know the attorneys, learned you know try to learn the hustle. Did some adjuster meetings, got some stuff bought. 
about 40 something I'm went to legal um, so here's my thing so if you're talking especially if you're on a platform like a social media platform and you're talking about roofing in Florida and you're roofing somewhere else in the United States you can't talk about roofing in Florida roofing in Florida is a different animal and it's a different model and it's I don't know, man. It, it's just a lot of things that make it different. There's complicated roofs. Yeah. There's harder inspections. The insurance, yes. they delay the process. Um, each legal process deal could take a year. The salesmen say stack and starve. Well, you get paid on a cap out, and if you put a deal in legal, you ain't getting paid for a year. It's not the same. So if you don't come with the yeah. income, if you don't figure out how to make it, you ain't going to be able to sit on your ass and live like a fucking Florida no. kid on the beach no. if you're not hustling. Yeah, and, and, and you better be here to stay. To stay. To stay till all your jobs are done. Or yeah. There's going to be two different, there's a couple different pay grades if you need to go home. There is. So I understand it all now. And uh, it wasn't a model for us. And like I said, if you're on, you know. Oh, you can do it. I'm going to teach y'all. We got, we're, we're, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to show you. You're going to see. And it really, really, I'll be honest, if you just do more retail, if you get, what we're doing is we're getting good leap, which basically will allow us to finance either the whole deal or the depreciation on 40% of the homes. Which makes a big difference if you know you're getting paid in full when you're finished. The other part about that is, is that here in Florida, there's a large percentage of people getting dropped. And this is about to happen in Georgia because Florida is yeah, the, the model. The model. Yeah, no, what's not. what's this new thing that you're seeing with 15 ACB, years? ACB, going straight to ACB or getting dropped, not renewed. And they're raising the price or they're having to address their older roof so they can get affordable insurance. And what does you think that does? Oh, I mean, you know, at 15 years, you either got to get it approved through insurance or you're getting dropped and you're going to go get an ACV policy somewhere else. It creates more of a demand for 100%. roofing. Whether you do a retail or you do insurance, it, it, it creates a sense of urgency. They have to have it now. And, and people may think that these this insurance market collapsing, these rules changing. No, the roof's still got to be fucking done. So it's here. Yeah. So it's here. The new model's here. Yeah. Private equity's here. Insurance company's changing. So everybody say, I, I tell everybody, hey, private equity's getting involved for a reason. Yeah. They're not throwing $2 billion at the wall and see if it sticks. No, there's the new more model than that. is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. The new model is here. So when I say something, it's like, oh, I've been hearing this for years. Well, you've been hearing it for years, and guess what? It showed up. I've been doing it for years. And right. if you're not a storm catcher, uh, a retail hybrid, if you don't have uh, a social media platform where you can help recruit, I mean, I know y'all social media has helped y'all recruit, you know, talk to us a little bit about like the goodwill. Like I think a lot of the growth on social media happened when you started paying for the kids lunches. How did, how did y'all come up with that? What did you, what did you, man, that was actually Ray's idea. Like, was it? Is your idea? Up. Why'd you do that? Uh, well, me and him owned a rehab. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, once we got, uh, once we shut that down and got free and clear, um, I'm big on giving back. Um, so uh, yeah, I just came up with it, and um, I was like, let's just start paying back the school lunches. We were doing a, we were doing it. Like Kids every, that couldn't afford a regular lunch. Yeah. 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 So every month we would do, you know, some sort of give back to the community. We wanted to do, you know, or, or give away or something. So what we were going to do was we were going to donate five thousand dollars. To all we wanted somebody to do was a good deed. You didn't even have to tell oh, us what the right. good yeah, deed yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. You just had to good, do a good deed the month of whatever we were in, and say good deed done. And we were keeping track. Of everybody, we we're going to put their name in a hat, draw it out, and we we're going to take five thousand dollars donate to the charity of your choice. Which one's your good deed? Open the door for a lady or fucking donate money or something. So Ray's good deed was going to be pay off us to lunch that. Nice. And I was like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, it didn't, and this is before my kids were born, you know. So. I'm like, or at least in school, I think I've learned more. But you dealt with that before? A little bit. You did? But I was Fucked like, well, up, man. What, is, what does this mean? Like, I didn't get, yeah. I didn't get it, you know? Because like, the kids know. that can't pay, they have to eat like a peanut exactly. butter and jelly. Oh, they go through the, they'll go through the line. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. They'll go through the line and they'll take their hot lunch and throw it away and give them water and like a little sack of bullshit lunch. And so, one, it's not fair to the kid, no matter what the parents are going to do. Yeah. It's not fair to the kid. But then two, now in a, in a day and age where you know, everybody's a fucking winner. Cyberbullying yeah. and fucking. You, guys, you just pinpointed this fucking kid uh -huh. that he's broke or he's this, and yeah. you get picked on, dude. Yeah. That's, not, that's not fair. Yeah. So, you know, we, we started doing that. We got to the point where we started doing like two or three a week every yeah. week. Cool, and, um, it's fucking cool, yeah, man. It's cool. I think the first two years we did right at a little over 100,000. Wow. And then COVID hit, which. 
shut the schools down. One good thing with COVID was it allowed everybody to have free lunch. Yeah. Um, and then they just got rid of that, so now we picked it back up. Oh, nice. So. It's fucking badass, man. Well, this is an incredible story of like, y'all came from some tough places and are doing amazing things. As far as another roofing company watching this that wants to join your platform or wants mentorship and help, you know, how are y'all qualifying companies? What is your vision for a future business owner on your platform? We want people to have the same goals as us and are willing to uh, learn um, and understand and be humble because a lot of people, especially in Georgia, you know, like we talked about before in Texas too, you get people that go out and open their own and they get a little bit too big for their britches, so to speak. So I think having people that are humble and want to learn, like no matter who it is, I know that other platforms we bring on, I'm going to learn from them, Ray's going to learn from them, they're going to learn from us. And we just find best best practices in whatever topic may be, and then that's what we implement. And that's the reason of, of working together. That's one reason me and Ray have always, we've never looked at anybody else's competition, whether they were bigger than us or smaller than us. We've always networked with other people because we can learn from everybody. You mm-hmm. know? So, um, But really, any company, our main thing is insurance, sh- asphalt shingles, central and eastern time zone. Nice. That's that's what we're looking for. Nice. Size doesn't matter, but just people that are willing to grow, put in the work, and grind. Now, I, bl- I believe that elite business owners have elite fitness. Y'all, too, do fitness through different ways. But one of the things that I do is I, I, I recruit in my niches. And so I'm curious, uh, bodybuilders and guys that ride bikes, How have you been able to turn your hobby into any, like, salespeople? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we turn salespeople into our hobby too. No, okay. That's where like work, work meets play, <laughs> so, isn't that's it? That's why I tell Ty because he's in a lot of personal development stuff like that. Uh, I just kind of fly by the seat of my pants, man. Uh, so, uh, but you race bikes? I race way. bikes, yeah. But I don't have any diet. Yeah, I race uh, endurance, uh, endurance race, mountain bikes, uh, thirty miles or better, three hours or better races. Um, I won a championship in 2019 and a championship, I think, in 17 or 18. Um, but. Uh, yeah, man, uh, you know, I think the biggest thing is, I tell Todd, you know, the personal development for him, I was like, dude, the the best paying the best paying client is is at the company. <laughs> so you develop a sales rep into a, you know, elite athlete or mm-hmm. an elite, elite individual um, outside of, uh, you know, roofing, uh-huh. and then they automatically do better in roofing. So, Fuck yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, uh, you know, we work from within um, is my biggest thing. So I've gotten guys into, to, to ride bikes and uh, to actually racing the bikes with me. Uh, so we might have in girls. Uh, my you got your team going out there? Yeah, I have a team going out there. And we have a team. Like We, we got the a kids. A perimeter team. Come either. You know, the coolest thing yeah, is Yeah, they like, just want to do it. You know, I got people that haven't seen me. They've only seen me eat out of a Tupperware container for, you know, 15, 20 years. And, like, I do my thing. Ray does his thing. They're completely different. But then you have so many people now within our company that – are doing meal prep or, or mountain climbing or riding bikes or they're getting Ultra in the gym or, you know, whatever. But we it, didn't make them do Isn't it. it funny that your tribe attracts your vibe? Yeah. 100%. And the biggest thing, too, is, like, you get healthy, you get fit, you lose weight, you get whatever, six-pack, whatever your goal is, and you feel more confident. And the more confident you are, the more happy you are, the more beat you are. The, the Both more of y'all have a superpower over a lot of most motherfucking roofers, don't you? Yeah, 100%. What, well, what's that one thing that most roofers don't have that you do? Discipline. Then I think I'm talking about one thing, and that both of y'all are sober. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. So Sobriety is a superpower, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. How, how for y'all? I'm not completely sober, but um, talk about sobriety as a superpower. <laughs> I mean, I have to be. I you got to be. Yeah, I mean, I have. I have to be. I'm naturally a little bit aggressive, a little bit, a little bit um, high strung. Um, Does that mean so, you're a high strung gangster? Uh, no, nah. <laughs> <laughs> reformed, reformed, reformed. Uh, but I'm 11 years clean. Uh, so, full disclosure, about four years ago, I started being Cali clean. So, uh, at night, I'll, I'll eat a gummy or you know hit my pen one time every night. Um, uh-huh. I'm completely don't take any prescription medication. I do not drink. I don't yeah. do anything. Um, and I like I, there's a term for that, Cali clean. Yeah, Cali clean. Well, so, helped to, I mean, yeah, that helped to come off his, his anxiety medication. Yeah. You know, so, so no more yeah. anxiety medication. Yeah. Um, so that was a big step for me. June 6, 2012 is my, you know, is my clean date. No narcotics or alcohol from that point. Um, dude, it, it, there's just no room for it. Yeah. Um, when you're talking about selling two, three, four million, trying to, you know, hitting 100 million. We're going to do like 78 this year with us and Regal. 
Um, there's no room for it at our company events. There's no alcohol really. We don't promote that atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Everybody's like, "Why don't we get together?" And they'll see another roofing company at a bar, and they're all like, ah. "Dude, that ain't." I mean, that ain't perimeter. Nah, that ain't, no. that, ain't, that, ain't, that, ain't, that ain't for us, you know. Uh, what about your story, Todd? Um, I was the same way. I was uh, an addict and same thing, violent and you know, going out and I was either trying to meet girls or fight one of the two. And, yeah. Um, and this was back when I trained MMA years ago. And uh, I just, I think, because Ray will tell you, I have super bad anxiety, like uh-huh. especially getting on a flight. And, like, <laughs> uh-huh. and well, thanks for coming. <laughs> I fucking can't stand it, you know. So like, he laughs because like I'll be popping like my, my anxiety medicine before we get on, and um, but I think I was kind of self medicating. Yeah, but I would take it to a whole nother. If there was alcohol, it didn't matter if we start, started right now. I'm going until they don't serve anymore somewhere. Uh-huh. And if they stop, if there's another place around that still serves, we're going there. And that's just how it was. I'd wake up in random places, um, in yards, staying in extended stays with strippers. Uh, I mean, I even had, like, my biggest sales pitch was, like, I didn't have any fucking money. I would go to strip clubs and hit on all these girls, had all these girls that loved me. And so I'd go to strip clubs and have them go do lap dances for the guys, but get the guys to buy them a drink and bring me the drink. So oh, I drank free all that. <laughs> so I had, I had, had muscles to it, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I'd steal hot dogs from Quick Trip to eat. That's the only way I had to eat. And, um, so you're I like, just, fuck that, dude. I'm turning my shit around. I had a really rough year. The last year I drank, I had a bunch of really violent things that happened to me and a, and a scare and an accident and uh-huh. you know, different things. So um, I, I remember going from homeless to calling my mom and saying, can I come back home? And uh-huh. of course she let me. I remember fucking bawling my eyes out to her and I was like, man, I will never drink again. Like if I can come back home and turn my life around, I'll never drink again. And, uh, what a fucking story, dude. Fucking. November first will be 13 years. Wow. Multi-millionaires from the depths of despair, man. That's the roofing business for you guys. This is what fucking it's all and, about. And, you know, this goes back to the, to the like we talked about, this is a second chance industry. And, um, you know, how a lot of people follow me and Ray as far as, like, the fitness aspect and, and hopping on that bandwagon. Dude, it's been the same thing with... Um, the struggle with addiction and alcohol or drugs, whatever it may be. We have people that have gotten clean and sober out of rehab. The last time, two years ago, when we went to um, Storm SVG, yeah. uh, when it was in uh, Dallas. Te- yeah, Dallas, random guy comes up to me, he's like, Todd. And I was like, yeah. You're pissing. He, yeah, I was pissed in the bathroom. And like, as soon as I turned around, he's right there. He's like, Todd. And I said, yeah. And he goes, do you remember me? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and he was like, I'm not going to say his name, but... Uh, he's like, it's me. I went through your program at Sober Living. I've been sober five years now. Oh, wow. You know, so um, it's cool to see people like that, but it happens in our company too, to where a lot of them have changed their life. They've quit. Dude, it doesn't matter if it's years. money or if it's changing from sobriety. I love to watch people transform, dude. That's, dude, that's what that's, that I don't give a fuck, man, about if, if you're going to be the richest person, but if you're getting better and you fucking have more confidence and shit, dude, that's, I just want to help people do that, dude. I told Ray and I told my wife the same thing, like, when money hit my account that day, yeah, like you know, you have this feeling of like, oh, fucking this, yeah. and I'm gonna get this. And yeah, the money hit the account. I looked at the account. and I was like, oh, well, now what? <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean, like, what's the next goal? Right. You know. So, and so now for me, and you know, I know Ray's the same way. Like seeing people get married, buying houses, getting nice truck, coming out of a beater, and getting a fucking nice truck that they're proud of, and starting to work out and be confident in their skin like dude that's what does it for me now like, dude I love that i'm telling you and both me and you share a coach wes watson uh, i hired him to speak at the event not a lot of roofers know who he is pretty pumped to see him at the event you coming yeah i gotta go see Wes. all right so yeah. tell him a little bit about wes how he's helped you how you think you might be able to help roofers so uh wes is I'll be, I'll be honest with you. He's not for everybody. <laughs> he's not for everybody. He's not for everybody. And I've got, you know, I've worked with Wes Watson. Um, I was on Brad Lee's podcast. Um, Ryan Steumann's my boy, and I've worked with him a lot. Um, but Wes is built a little bit different. And he, but I, th- I, th- I think some people need that. He spent 10 years in prison, came out. Even when he was in prison, he was, he was reading, learning, taking pictures, writing posts motivating others um you know i think he came out and was living with his grandmother his mom for a little while like from a flip phone was started making a hundred thousand dollars a month or some shit from a fucking flip phone but um 
now he's doing public speaking, motivating, coaching, and the numbers that he does. 20 million a month. He's got a fucking millions of subscribers. You want to learn how to become a social skills king? You want to recruit a team? That's what I was telling Todd. It's like, if you're a coach first and you build your social media brand, you work on the personal brand first, the rest will come. Yeah. And that's what I realized it was eight years ago when I started going all in on this shit. But I think Wes is teaching that to the masses. Yes. And I have students that are in my program, I've, I've recommended to go take his shit, that have this potential to be a coach. One of the kids, his name's Kyle Dotson, and he's like, like his ability to speak his story, speak his truth, to own his stuff. Like I was telling him, let your oddities be your commodities, but it's Wes fucking driving it into him where now he's got the confidence to beat on like his chest and, fuck fuck and just also part. share your fucking things you don't want to share. That's yeah. how that's how people relate with and you. That's what a lot of people, you know, a lot of people have said that, like Ron or Stumann's talked about that. Like I, when I got out of prison, I shared everything. He's mm -hmm. like, I have nothing to hide. So there's nothing that anybody can say about me ever right. that is that I have to run from. Right. Yeah. Um, Brad Lee's the same way. David Goggins talks about it a lot. Those are huge mentors to me and, and people that I look up to because there's so many coaches like Ray, Ray talked about. There's so many coaches out there that preach this, preach that, but they don't do what the fuck they're saying that they're doing. Mm -hmm. And those motherfuckers right there, they do it. Like, yeah. I mean, Wes, I'll tell you, his schedule day in, day out is yeah. on goddamn Instagram. Instagram. Every yeah. day. He proves it. Documents Two, it. 2.30 in the yeah. morning, Cali time, not yeah. here. 2.30 in the morning, he's out there doing his fucking burpees. burpees. And then he's in the gym at four. After he gets his protein yeah. and all of his fucking meals. He's going to post his coffee and everything at 2.30. Then he's going to do his burpees. And then he's hey, but the thing is, is most, most guys like don't realize the value of people. It, you don't have to have a million followers. Whoever's watching your stories are people that are the most engaged. And if you're not documenting what you're doing, I mean, this is one of the biggest things Wes taught me. Ever since I started messing with Wes, I just, even with my own sales team, dude, share your big wins, tag me. Everyone tag each other and wins organically. Y'all do that shit, man. And I mean, how much does that shit help you grow like in recruiting? Because people see it and they know that you're for real. Like you stand Yeah, y'all don't miss a roof. Like every roof you build, somebody will tag you and they'll share it almost 100%, yeah. yeah like all the time every single fucking one. and see i've told my people here recently i'm like i'll have the same roof on my page sometimes like nine <laughs> fucking but times. the thing is, is my, sometimes yeah. sometimes <laughs> like even though i do social media well yeah. even though i'm doing paid advertisement well my guys don't always do it so when i join wes's and i'm like he's like share your big wins share my big like dude where the fuck are you dog like he's trying to explain to me Dude, every fucking post, every video, let it demonstrate value to the people that you want to help. Let it fucking be the fucking example for what they need, dude. People buy when their emotions are greater than their resistance. And, uh, dude, that's why, like, if you're watching this right now, look, I got to get these guys on stage. You got to come shake hands with all the people. September 1st through 3rd, there's a lot of bullshit, a lot of fucking drama going on because, dude, People are really, really jealous that we are getting so many results for people, that we're doing so many roofs. And you know what I can say to all my haters? Thank you. I say hi to you. I know you're watching every fucking minute obsessed in your fucking dark room. I see him in my story. Please, put away the lotion, queer bait. I mean, Jesus Christ. Look, not going to go out here and get canceled, okay? But I can tell you one thing. It's getting a little weird. And the, the truth is, is like me, like, being here to hang out. I was really looking forward to y'all coming and really looking forward to hanging out and really looking forward to the rest of the conversation. We're going to go take a tour of my office. We're going to go through each little step, but you know, I'm eager to come to y'all's place. I'm eager to come yeah. to Atlanta. We got this, uh, what do you think the odds are this fucking guy shows up to fight me? I don't know. You know, you know, like I said, I'm not. He signed the contract. <laughs> I say neutral. I stay neutral. Bet so, me a thousand dollars that he shows up. What are the terms of the contract if somebody doesn't show up? So I didn't read the whole thing. There is no terms we of the just contract. Tried to set it up. Some a man to man signs a contract says I'm gonna fight you. Then you either show up Shake or you don't. Right. Like, yeah. So the contract says now here's what the contract says. It says that it's in Georgia we couldn't do a boxing fight. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's a yeah, so, yeah. So, so it's a kickboxing fight. Yeah, yeah. And so he wants me to be a gentleman and just use boxing. Now, do y'all think I should just use boxing? Because they're gonna put shin guards on my legs, and it's a kickboxing fight, and it says in the contract that. Can he do kickboxing? Yeah. So basically, uh, then that's not fair. 
do do I do I uh, just wait for him to kick me, or do I just go out there and kick him right in the head? Well, I guess you got more fights up on your belt, so wait for him to kick you. Yeah, I guess yeah, you so. Got, you got, y'all got to do the gentleman's well, agreement, and he's not gonna. So, so you think I should follow the gentleman's agreement? Uh, follow the gentleman's agreement. I, no, I text gonna, back. I've been facilitating it, texting back and forth. Okay, with so you yeah. think? You say yeah, yeah. So he that, show, so he said he's showing up, and okay. that I know you're gonna show up. So I don't know. I think so. Listen, here's how it is, and Todd knows this too. Look, if I get in a fight, so I there was some. I had a situation where I got into a Me and Ray have been there for, for each other a long time. <laughs> for a couple of situations. Well, well, when I was in a situation and I got in a fight with somebody and I thought it was going to be okay because they hit me first. Yeah. So usually after that, I text them and say, well, I'm glad we got that out the way. And I thought everything was going to be cool. It ended up being cool. Ray was going to approve a roof for him after. And I did got it approved. It was 67 yeah. squares before waste. And I got it approved for him after where somebody hit me. Somebody hit me, and uh, I'm not gonna say no names. So I, you I waited, <laughs> yeah, but, you well, held that in the back pocket yeah, yeah. So so, you, so, to the right moment. So, so the re- so, yeah, so the, the the fight didn't go their way after they hit me. It was really bad for about 30 seconds. Got you didn't the, kill him. I didn't kill him, but I did get the better of him. Right. Know? And uh, but I thought we were gonna be cool. I thought we were gonna be cool and everything. So usually in the past, for me in high school, middle school, in the streets or whatever, after Shake I got in a fight hands. with somebody, I was I respected them and and that's what I'm hoping Boy. that comes out of y'all's fight. Yeah, me too. I'll respect I hope, if the dude, motherfucker shows up. Yeah, well that's what I'm saying. I, hope I don't give a fuck if he I, shows up. I'll shake his hand. I, I, First I, I time hope. I confronted him, the fucking dude just wouldn't look me in the eye. Tried to shake my hand. I'm like, dude, you're calling me a cancer. What the fuck are you doing trying to shake my hand? Yeah. So I hope after y'all fight that y'all can hug and uh, even to collaborate. Yeah, that's so what I'm hoping. My yeah. thoughts, is I would say, <laughs> I would say, I know you got cardio because you train. He does CrossFit, so he's got cardio. He's got definitely more cardio than I do. Um, but I got beat by a fucking less talented fighter last time I fought. I was beating the shit out of the guy. The guy caught me with the overhand right, and he dropped me. And they Everybody stopped the, can get They stopped the fight, but it was a good lesson for if me. You can Everybody both throw punches caught. right off the rip. That's fine. If you want to wait for him to throw a kick, the, the, my take on that is he's not going to throw a roundhouse that's going to hit you in the head. No. So it might hit your ribs, yeah, might hit fine. your shin, but it's probably going to hurt his shin more. It's going to hurt yours because you're used to it. Oh, this dude ain't going to kick. I guess what you're saying is I got to beat him fucking with the with my hands. With my hands are my best weapon, so yeah, 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 it don't yeah. matter. I could beat him up with one hand. So. Um. <laughs> But that's that's my that's my that's what I hope. Y'all want me to go out there with just the left? <laughs> this fucking guy's not gonna be able to stop yeah, just the I, left I, hand. I hope y'all fight, and then after that, for the industry, right? I hope y'all can. Uh, I hope y'all so, can squash so it. So, so in y'all's opinion, is Lee Hate a scam? No, you're not a scam, bro. Yeah. You're not a scam. And for people that don't know, we've had beef before. 100%. Yeah, yeah, we have big beef. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. was. I mean, I went to Atlanta. I hired a security guard like a bitch. I was like, this motherfucker's gonna come out here with some crazy shit. This and fucking no guy's crazy. Like, yeah, for people who don't know, Lee, Lee stopped fucking Ray from coming to an event, and I saw Lee in beeline form because yeah. I had to speak my mind. Yeah, and that's when. I think it was Justin and somebody Yeah, else fucking up, piece and I was like, oh, fucking, fucking work, <laughs> motherfucker, <laughs> 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 fucking clown. Bitch. So this this isn't brand new to nobody. No, you know no. the beef, the beef and everything else. But you know we kept it all. But I had this idea though, a blue car fight club where if there was beef, that it got settled in the cage, just like you know street beef. I saw beefs. that. And I thought that. Yeah. Are you still doing that? Yeah, and okay, and yeah, I, I mean the thing was is that 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 homie didn't want to come fight me on my venue, and he didn't want to be a part of my card. So we're gonna go to Atlanta. We don't care, but we do have other contractors fighting contracts. Contractors. As a matter of fact, we could probably talk Justin into getting in there with you and there taking a go. beating. Shit, there you go. Go you know, and get he, him in there. He, I damn sure will sign up for it. Come well, off the bench on that. Well, well, you will? You'll come off the <laughs> no, bench? Just, no, Parker. Parker. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, you want me to get you set up? Dog? <laughs> I'll get you set up. Justin Parker, you done heard it. <laughs> Raymond wants you right here, dog. Come on. We'll get you set up in there. That'd be the fastest fight of the night. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. A little yeah, amateur. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no, uh, uh, you know, there's no shortage of beef in the roofing industry. I, no. I, I think it, man, to be honest with you, and I'm, uh, I come from, I cut from a different cloth. I feel like, you know, sometimes, you know, it's 2023. I feel like sometimes you got to take the gloves off and, and, and get to it, you know, yeah. and get, and I think, man, I think it builds a stronger relationship and respect level when two can hit and, Absolutely. and, and come out of it, you know? Yeah. It's this keyboard uh, warrior meme fucking look, video straight. But we're also professional with it. Yeah. Be professional. And that, and that's why I intervene with you and Dimitri, cause I'm neutral and I'm cool with both of you. Um, you know, is I wanted a, a, a safe, clean, 
environment, the squash sanctioned hey, event. Talk about safe squash. sanctioned. I got August 12th. There's a uh, client in the mastermind, Donald Sanchez. He's yeah. fought in a ton of different places. Like he's a pro fighter. He's probably the most accomplished roofing fighter there is, but he's got a bare knuckle fight and oh, he's, wow. he's doing his last bare knuckle fight went five, five rounds. Man, and it's in BKFC. Uh, there's one, okay, there's it's one in, in BKFC. It's, B, it's BKFC. So he's fighting. So he is having me come in for the event, but he's doing a recruiting event the day after. And I'm like, bro, what if your face looks like fucking zombie land? They like, always, I know. Every, 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 they're they fucking faces. Hey, this motherfucker is a beast. Yeah. He, he scheduled a fucking recruiting event the day after yeah. his fucking that's bare knuckle. That's gladiator knuckles. school right Some there. gladiator school yeah, shit, dog. I, I, that bare knuckles is yeah. gladiator school. There's a buddy of mine that, uh, that I sponsor. I got a bunch of fighters and bodybuilders that I sponsor with myself in my company. And there's one that does bare knuckle in BKFC. And dude, they just... I mean, they scrap it out and they get hit and they just... No, they stand them up, dude. Just yeah. fucking stand up, Keep stand going. up, stand Keep up. Going. That is a fucking... It is ruthless. Ruthless. I, I'm, I'm, I was honestly sitting over there at my house. I'm thinking, damn. I've never been to a, be a bare knuckle event. It's fucking... I've, I've never been. So I'm thinking... Oh shit! This is this is this is on the violent side of yeah. motherfucking violence, motherfucker. Yeah, they made me have butterflies for them because I've been. Doing <laughs> I know, no. I've been in a bunch of those. Uh, I know. Uh, not sanctioned events. I've been in the non-sanctioned, the non-sanctioned in the street. Hey, you know? that's where you gotta watch for a rock and a knife and a motherfucking <laughs> yeah, what's yeah. what's in their goddamn car, motherfucker. Yeah, I got shot twice when uh and after a fist fight. So damn uh, it, no, I get it, dude. Well, guys, we'll put the guns down and the gloves up. <laughs> Raise the status for blue collar entrepreneurs <laughs> at the go. Fight Club, dude. Don't you miss September first through third. We got Gilbert Burns. Hey, you did MMA training, so my question is: is we're we're doing this workout, and guys, if you don't want to roll, you don't want to get punched in the face, you don't have to. But it's gonna be cool. We're gonna break down. We're gonna do jujitsu. And my my question to you is: how many of the roofers do you think will try jujitsu? <laughs> if they get in a fight, or just no, no, class? we're gonna at the event. It the, should be a lot in the middle of the event. I think that's a good I would look. Say if it's yeah. a class, I don't. Uh, I think. I mean, nobody has to get the fucking. There's roll. no shortage of ego in the roof. In the that's room. what I'm saying. So get in there, dude. Well, now, let me tell you. I can tell you all some of the speakers there. They have told me already that they're gonna be avoiding that 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 yeah, whole yeah. escapade. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm I'm curious a, about Wes. I haven't really fucked with Wes about it. I give you a list of three or four people. I wonder if Wes is gonna get on the mat. Oh yeah, yeah, and I'd be more than happy to. Okay, to give me that list. Yeah. We're trying to we're trying to create blue collar. So you want a three on one? I'm fine with it. Okay, that's some fucking circus shit Ray, right here. I can list the three for you. <laughs> God damn, we're having too much fun with this. I don't think that they. Yeah, I, I, I think. I mean, I think it's cool. I think it's entertaining. Look, the roofing industry revolves every day, right? There's, right. Uh, people making a lot of money, a lot of ego. Uh, I, I think it's a great event, dude. I'm going to be there. Hey, it's look. a rough around the edges industry. Right, come on, man. It's a second chance industry. People have fun. As long as yeah. everybody knows it's profe yeah, professional, bro. we're having fun, we're in a ring. And we're making we're our shit that. cool, dude. Yeah. What the right. fuck is you wrong with that? You're to talk 12-12s all day, and you ain't going to square up with somebody and don't talk shit on. Oh, yeah, you're going to take that is, shit bro. from the adjuster? On, you're going to let that adjuster talk to you like that? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. You know, you're out there. It's a rough It's a rough industry. It's hot. It's cold. Steep roofs. You know, it's, you know, you're climbing it. You're risking your life every day. I mean, don't worry about it. I, I think you know. I think it's a healthy event. And like I said, I think it'll actually bring y'all two together. All Mark right, my man. words. Here we go, guys. If you're watching this, you got to join us September first through third. BlueCollarConference.com. We'll put the link in the comments, dude. Thank y'all for doing this. I want to go run a door-to-door -door blitz with your team. I want to go out there in the streets. I want to go out there and make some content. And I want y'all to come to the event and share your story. All right. All right. We'll figure it out. All right, guys. Till next time. Hit like and subscribe. Appreciate y'all.